All right. And I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the Seven Step System to Pass a TOEFL IBT. I'm going to listen to your independent speaking, or, or actually your integrated, or your pronunciation post test, actually. All right, I'm listening to Speak Clearly, uh, lesson number 48. This is the diagnostic post test. And I'm going to take down some notes. If there's anything I think you need to work on, I'll let you know. So the purpose of the post test is to see if you have mastered the vowel and consonant sounds of American English. This post test will also give you feedback so you can see how you're doing in terms of syllable division and grammatical word endings, word stress, sentence rhythm, intonation, thought groups, and blending. So I'll give you feedback in those areas. Around his body, into which other... When two people are talking to each other, they tend to stand a specific distance apart. Okay. Each person has an invisible boundary around his body, into which other people may not came. If so, someone pierces this boundary, he will... They may not come. Remember, when you have may, which is a modal, you can't conjugate the verb after that. So it's not may not came, but may not come. You feel com comfortable and move away to increase the distance between them. I would say here not move away, but move away. So the last sound here, the V, it links to the first sound of the next word, move away. The major exception is family members and others' loved ones. This personal distance is not due to body odor or bad breath, but because closeness lends a sense of intimacy that is at odds with the relationship to the other individual. Notice there's no S here. It's not others' individual, but other individual. So it lends a sense of intimacy that is at odds with the relationship to the other individual again here so lens lends a sense of intimacy you want to take the s sound and blend that with the first word uh, the first letter of the next word which is uh, a interesting the average personal distance varies from culture to you want to say varies not varies varies from culture to culture, culture. Americans tend to require more personal space than in other, in other cultures. Therefore, if you try to get too close to an American during your conversation, he or she will feel that you are in his face and will try to back away. Try to be away. You will say, we'll try to back away. Ba not back away, but back away. Aware of this. So, if the person to whom you are speaking backs away a little, don't try to close the gap. Better, backs away a little. So, you're trying to get used to blending. It's not easy for you right now, but you made a good attempt on that one. Also, try to avoid physical contact while you are speaking, since this may also lead you to discomfort. All right. Touching is a bit too intimate for casual acquaintances. So, no, it's casual casual acquaintances so this is syllable division here acquaintances casual acquaintances don't put your arm around his or her shoulders don't touch his or her face or hold he or her hands shaking hand and shaking hands when you initially meet or part is acceptable but this is only momentary okay Part B. Question one. Who is your best friend? Why is it? Okay, so now what you're doing is you're just answering some questions because what I need to do now is I'm going to give you an intelligibility score, right? So if I go over to useful templates here. What I need to figure out right now is to give you some feedback here. So where are you on my intelligibility scale based on how you answer those questions? So are you 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6? 
you have seven here is considered a near native speaker fluency of English. Then you have one is a high beginner. That is where we are right now. Okay, so let's listen to your response. This to the person important to you uses supporting examples. All right. Um, Clarissa is my best friend. I met her when we were kids and we have been friends until nowadays. Notice how you said I met her when we were kids, kids, but that's not pronouncing that vowel sound correctly. So instead of kids, you want to say kids. I met her when we were kids or I met her when we were children. She's the main part of my support system, indeed. She's the first person that I used to call when I have some problem, and usually she's very helpful for me. Moreover, she's always with a happy mood. She's very optimist and funny almost all the time. Okay. One example is when I broke up, broke up with my boyfriend a few years ago. She stayed with me for a long time until I... I feel better about this this situation I would say I felt better about this situation because of her so I would use the past tense there not the present These are some reasons why she is so important to me question two where do you see yourself five years from now what will you be doing be sure to explain your ideas with supporting details okay um, I would like to. I would like to have finished my second graduation in Canada, and also be living there with my family. I think that in five years I will be working with children in early childhood education, okay. and I hope that I will be happy with these changes in my life. All right. Nowadays, my husband and I are planning to move to Canada. Regarding, right. I got to achieve these goals and also to improve our English as a second language. Okay. I really hope that we get success in our planning. Question three, what is your favorite season of the year? Um, I really like the spring season because the weather used to be a pleasant climate. Uh, in this way, we have much... It's climates, not climates, but cli, I, climates. More options to have fun with our family. One example, uh, we can go to the beach during the weekend or go to a park to play with our kids. Moreover, is the season, in, in, this, in this season, I'm sorry, the city is more beautiful because there are several numbers of flowers spread through the city. All right, so where are we right now? So, uh, based on your response, let's go back to the intelligibility scale here. So, I think you've made improvements. When I first met you, you had so many pauses and hesitations, it was almost impossible to even concentrate on what you were saying. So, I think you've definitely made some improvements. But are you where you need to be? I don't know. I'm going to put you at high intermediate, maybe 4.4 .4 out of 7. I'm going to put you in the middle here. This is your intelligibility score right now. If you wanted to do well on TOEFL speaking, I recommend you try to get at least to this level here so you're not there yet. Now the question is, what can you do, if anything, that will have an impact on improving your pronunciation? So obviously speaking a lot of English, watching movies, uh, really getting a lot of exposure to the language makes a difference. We know that, right? You know that. Okay, now in terms of my course, let's see which areas of my course you have not mastered. That's what I want to look at right now. Okay, the first one here is uh, pronunciation lesson number 11, the E, E. You remember when you said kids? You have not mastered the I, the, as in the sound bit, kids. That sound you have not mastered yet, for sure. Okay, which one? What else? I think here, you remember the word casual? Z, casual. That's a pronunciation le lesson number 16. You're having some trouble with that sound. 
the next one, I think for the most part you're okay with syllable division, grammatical word endings. Um, I think that you need to improve your intonation a little bit more. I think you can do that by improving your sentence rhythm and your intonation. So maybe lessons 33 through 35, lessons 36 through 40. In my opinion, you have not mastered those uh, uh, pronunciation lessons yet. Thought groups and blending, you've made a lot of improvements there, but you're not doing very well with blending. So I think it's uh, lesson number 44. So you can also benefit, I think, by reviewing, by studying that particular lesson. All right, does that make sense? So I, I think you're a lot better. I remember when you first posted a speaking response, it was very, very disastrous. It was really hard for me to understand what you're saying. You've come a long ways from that. So I congratulate you on that. All right, now I believe that you are canceling your subscription or you've already canceled your subscription from my course. Um, and uh, I just want to tell you I'm glad, to, I, I am very glad to have had you as a student. I know you've made a lot of improvements. Just remember that your journey, even though you might not be using my course anymore, your journey is not over. You still have some work to do, I think, to improve your speaking and pronunciation of American English.